quite frankly, I just don't like to spend any class time on behavior. Does that make me weird? Hi, welcome to the Teacher's Playbook. My name is Melanie Howell, and I've been a classroom teacher for more than 20 years. Today's video is about behavior management. If you like this video, I hope you will consider subscribing. Let me start with a story. One day last year, I had a student come in to my fifth grade class, um, turn in his homework and say, Ms. Howell, do you know the teacher, Ms. Floyd? And I said, I sure do. Ms. Floyd is one of my favorite people. And he said, well, do you know that when we would turn a paper into her, she would give us a Skittle? And I looked at the child and smiled and I said, yes, but Miss Floyd teaches first grade and this is fifth grade. You got a Skittle when you were six years old. You don't get a Skittle when you're 10 years old. You get to learn something new and do the right thing by turning in your assignments. Please go sit down. All right, I tell that story to emphasize that I know younger kids need tangible rewards, but by the time they get to my fifth grade room, there aren't tangible rewards. I need you to know that my perspective is coming from that of an upper elementary classroom. All right, so we all need behavior management tips, but we all need to share those ideas because as soon as you do something over and over and over and it gets stale, when it gets stale, it gets ineffective. So I would greatly appreciate it if anyone who's in a classroom would leave down in the comments their tips and tricks for behavior management because again, we're all trying to shake things up from time to time. In the past, I found this very successful. I put dashes on my board that spell out what the reward will be. Say, we've earned five extra minutes of recess. That's a lot of blanks to have to fill in, and that's a good thing because um, in the beginning, you need to let them earn it rather quickly so that they get the reward rather quickly so that they're more anxious to get the next reward. And then you can start slowly, you can sort of stretch out how long it takes them to uh, get the reward. But again, my rewards are not tangible. It's things like we've earned five extra minutes of recess. We've earned a night with no spelling homework. Um, and then for individual kids I've done that need a little extra, not just the class, I've done rewards in terms of I've earned 15 minutes to help the coach with kindergarten PE class, or I've earned 15 minutes in the art room when she's teaching the second grade, or to go read to a younger class, or something like that, something where they go help someone else around the school. But back to the group reward. The group reward and spelling out we've earned five extra minutes of recess. The reason this works is positive peer pressure. Positive peer pressure is a wonderful thing because as they are coming in from lunch, transition time basically, I'm able to say, oh, thank you, Johnny, you've earned everybody a letter E and I'll start filling in the puzzle. Well, as soon as they see I'm doing this, other kids will start doing exactly what they're supposed to do to try to earn the letters. And then eventually those few that are still misbehaving, the other children will start encouraging them to do what they're supposed to do. And I never have to say a word because the positive peer pressure works. But the goal is to get them to the point where they don't need all of this. Honestly, if you've ever watched the YouTube channel Real Rap with the Reynolds, he teaches ninth grade and he basically says to his kids, um, I expect you not to act the fool. And I agree with that. I tell my fifth graders, I expect you to act like a fifth grader should act. You know, I mean, I don't expect ninth grade behavior from 10 year olds, but I do expect 10 year old behavior from 10 year olds. And typically what you expect is what you get. The one thing you learn in college about behavior management that actually works is proximity. Okay, that's not an earth-shattering strategy, 
but proximity works. I was raised in a school, my first school had a rule that teachers do not sit down in the classroom if students are present. And of course this was 1992 and desks were in rows and we were expected to walk, circle the room and walk the aisles while kids were in there and we were doing our instruction and this of course encouraged proximity. And I'm sorry, proximity works. If you haven't tried that, you, sh you should. And for those of you in college, that's one thing you learn in college that does actually work. So number one, sort of your mystery group rewards. Number two, proximity actually works. Number three, this one's a little controversial. We know that parenting styles have changed a lot over the last 20 years. And 20 years ago, it was common practice that teachers put the name on the board of the student that was misbehaving. The new version of this is not, of course, you don't want to humiliate anyone, uh, so they don't put their name on the board, but you can use a sticky note, or I have those desks that are uh, you can use Expo marker on, so you can go by and put tally marks on a post-it note. You can put tally marks on their desk with an Expo, whatever the case may be. Now, I have to say, in theory, that sounds fantastic. In reality, all the kids know what you're doing when you put a tally mark on somebody's desk, just like they know what it means when somebody writes their name on the board. So I'm not sure why one is so much more humiliating than the other. But the point is, it's making behavior visible. For example, I have um, a little girl in my class who is gifted beyond measure. And she is sweet as pie. And I love her dearly. She can work and talk at the same time and get things finished and accomplished. And she can do them well she doesn't understand that not everyone can do that. This is a nice way of saying she is constantly talking, constantly talking. She doesn't realize how much she's talking. So to make behavior visual for her is a good thing. And then she learns and it won't, it won't take her long to figure out. She'll, catch, she'll start catching herself so she's not talking so much. I don't really know of any schools where it's still okay to have students put their name on the board, except for one. One very important, influential school, and that is the Ron Clark Academy, which is located in Atlanta. If you haven't um, checked them out on YouTube, you should. Um, he is an exceptional educator, and there is a great story behind all of that. When I went to a professional development day at the Ron Clark Academy, I was kind of surprised to find out that their behavior management was all about kids put their name on the board. And because everybody knows they get academic results. And when you go to visit, the children are so well behaved and you think, oh, well, it's because all these teacher visitors are here. But for them to get those results, it has to be consistent. They have to really listen and concentrate and things have to be <laughs> on par, so to say. One of the parts of that day, that professional development day that I loved, was that they set it up so that every teacher that visits has lunch with a student of the school. And that's your opportunity to sort of ask the questions you're not able to ask when you know hundreds of teachers show up on one day. You can ask these students. So the um, sweet sixth grade girl that I had lunch with this day, I said to her, um, I noticed you guys put your name on the board when you misbehave, and she said yes. Because you know you visit during their class, and so you see this happen. And um, the teacher points to a child and points to the board, and the child just gets up and walks over and puts their name on the board, and it's over. So my question to her was, does any one of the, do any of the students ever argue about they shouldn't have to put their name on the board? Like, it wasn't me, it was my neighbor, you know, that kind of thing. And she said, oh no. She said, because arguing is much worse than getting up and putting your name on the board. And I thought, interesting. I mean, they, they waste no instructional time 
and they conference about it later after class. They don't spend instructional time talking about behavior. They just don't. It was quite magical. <laughs> We've talked about tangible rewards versus rewards where you go around the school and help other people. We've talked about the fact that proximity is something they teach you in college and it actually works. And we've talked about making behavior visual. Well, I think that's kind of the premise behind clip charts and class dojo. And I realize there's definitely a place for that. There are kids that definitely need that. It's just not something that I do. If you like what you see, I hope you will consider subscribing to the channel and I really hope people will leave their comments below so that we can share some of our best tips and classroom hacks and ideas so that we don't, our classrooms don't become stale. <laughs>